Hey guys, welcome back to Apartment 3 Podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Kofi. What's up guys? So we'll start off pretty simple. Just tell us a little bit about yourself for the people that don't know. Uh, my name's Kofi I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, actually Scarborough, the east side. Uh, I make music, produce, write, write for myself, for other people. Um, yeah, make songs. Nope. So you said you born born and raised in Toronto? Yeah. All right. So t- how was that? Growing up, um, I mean, I love it. I love Scarborough. It's kind of, I don't know how to. It's so diverse out there. Like you have everything within Scarborough. There's like rich. There's poor. There's you know white, black, everything in between. Uh, I just yeah, I, I really like it actually. That's dope. So, we were kind of looking on your on your Instagram. Obviously, we followed you for probably about a year. Notice Drake follows you. <laughs> yeah. So where I, did that connection come from? Uh, actually right over there is my manager. His name's Ellie. Um, he's been in the nightlife industry for, I, I don't even know how many years. And, uh, he knew Drake before Drake was, you know, Drake. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the, the plug. He, he was the one showing him my music. Actually, I remember the first time I met him, I was at a party and, um, I showed him or Ellie showed him my music and he was like yeah yeah whatever you mm-hmm. know yeah so many people show drake and he's like yeah this is the volleyball kid i was telling you about he's like oh yeah i seen that guy on bleacher report so that was kind of cool and ever since then you just see him out whenever do you do you get that a lot the volleyball kid that can rap <laughs> yeah actually i do um that's I, I mean volleyball doesn't really get that much respect as a sport but once people see like that i can kind of make it look cool sometimes uh they give me respect. Yeah, they start noticing. The so I noticed you had a uh, a video mm-hmm. online about what is it called, the monster of the vertical, something, something like, like that? that. Yeah, and it has like twelve million views. So how did that come about? <laughs> um, I think those that, like all those highlights are just from one game. I think that's just the national championship two years really? ago. And yeah, the, those guys are making money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, that I know. I need. I noticed that like. Like you said, not many people respect volleyball, probably like they should. I mean, mm-hmm. um, my little sister, she she played volleyball, and she was like, yeah, it's it's a lot harder than a lot of people think, it's just yeah. hitting a ball. Yeah, it's definitely a lot harder. Um, I mean, I like it because there's just so many different aspects. Like, in basketball, I mean, I'm ignorant to basketball at a high level, so I'm sure I, there, there's some things I'm taking not taking into account, but uh, if one guy is great on your team, they can kind of, you know, hog the ball and score all your points yeah exactly not true volleyball like if if i'm good i could be the best middle in the world if my setter is not good or my my uh like my team serve reception is terrible nothing i can't do anything yeah so it's more of like a collaborative effort for sure mm-hmm. so w- musical influence so yes, sir. talk about that like who who's like your your biggest musical influence my biggest ever is akon not close um just in every aspect of what he's done musically uh as well as production and now what he's doing like from the uh, philanthropy like uh perspective it's just amazing but also being from toronto i mean i love drake obviously Tory Lanez, ridiculous. I also listen to a lot of old stuff like Sam Cooke, Otis Redding. Um, yeah, I mean, but Akon, Akon's the guy for sure. Hands down the number one yeah. influence. So what what made you get into music? I mean, obviously you said a little bit of Akon, so I'm assuming you heard Akon and was like, for sure, I like this. Uh, yeah, definitely. But um, I mean, I was always around music. My mom put me into piano lessons, which I hated when I was young, but now, now I love it, because I played a bunch of instruments growing up, like drums, even drum, like trombone, um, so, like, I was always in music theory, which helps me a lot as a producer and as an artist, because, like, I actually know how to read and write music and, you know, kind of speak the language. So, kind of go back to the, the Toronto and just Canada in general, um, notice you do have, like, a lot of YouTube connections, you have a song with Wolfie, well, yeah. Charles, I think his musical name is correct. Mm. So, I mean, how did that happen? Kind of explain that. Um, I knew him through Jad. He goes through. Uh, he goes by Chad with a J. Um, so I know him because he used to play volleyball, 
and they all live in Ottawa, which is about five hours away from Toronto, and that's where the Canadian national team trains. So there's nothing really to do out there. So we're always just at at their house. They all live together. Um, so when Wolfie hit me, um, said yo, because they all knew I did music, and when he hit me and said yo, like let's work. I like your beats. I'm trying to do music now. We kind of just locked in and. You know, he came here. He has a little setup at his place too. So we just made music super organic. That's good. Yeah. Go ahead. So, not only did you have Wolfie, but you also had a track with Lonzo Ball. So yeah. was that like a UCLA Bruins connection, or how did that happen? Um, that was actually also my manager Ellie. All right. Um, me and Lonzo, like when we were here, we came in as freshmen together, and we, you know, like UCLA hard school, but they put the freshmen through like the easiest classes first just to like get them used to it. So we were in Scandinavian literature together, <laughs> easy class. Um, so like when we went, we were like talking, chopping it up. Like he knew I did music. I knew that he was rapping. So we were like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get in the studio, studio, never did it. And then he connected with him at like a party. So after that, we just like, you know, got back into it. And then he's actually serious. His, his music's a lot better than people give him credit for. Yeah, so I mean, from the sounds of it, you got a pretty good manager. Yeah, got, for sure. Got the connection to get you some, I mean, you got, what was it, like 20K or something on Instagram, on your yeah. high school one. So yeah. connecting with those bigger bigger artists and stuff, I feel like it's definitely good for you. Get your name out there more, right? Yeah, for sure. Actually, like when the whole Drake following me thing came out, I think I got like, I might have gotten like 7,000 followers yeah. in a day just because the man followed oh, wow. me. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, Drake, he's... On a different level than yeah. generational yeah, eyes. Anybody. Yeah. So obviously you go to UCLA. Yeah. So did you move out to LA for college? Yeah. Or okay, so I'm assuming they how does that work since you're from Canada and all that? How does them recruiting you to the States work? Um, I gotta get or I had to get like a visa. Um Yeah, I basically just had to get a visa, I had to write my SATs, which is not something that we have to do in Canada. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was pretty smooth. Just a student visa, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah F1. Okay. So how was the change in like uh, lifestyle for you, moving from Toronto all the way to LA? Oh, it's different, because like, isn't, this isn't just LA, like I live in Brentwood, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a super affluent area for people that don't know. Um, and I'm from Scarborough, which is like the Compton of Toronto. It's not that, like, Compton gets a really bad rep. Tor Scarborough's not that bad, but... Scarborough is like not, not, not the place you want to be in yeah, Toronto. Yeah, you know? to, to compare to something basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just being from that, it's so different how people live, how people were brought up. So that's something that I definitely had to get, get used to, you know? Well, so you said it was difficult. It's different. What would, I know, I mean, obviously LA is kind of the city everyone wants to go to for yeah. anything. Basically, what advice would you give anybody trying to move to LA? Um, just, it's going to be uncomfortable, but you got to go through anything. Like, anything worthwhile is going to be uncomfortable, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, we got, I mean, we got some notes here. We got so much to talk about. For sure. So, go, kind of go back to the um, volleyball at UC, uh, UCLA. What what made you get into volleyball? Um, I mean, I'm super competitive, and I have one sibling, older sister. So, she played, and if she's going to do something, I'm like, yeah, I got to do it better. So she never actually played with me, but um, I was like, yeah, I got to be better, so I'm going to do this. And then, uh, yeah, it kind of just got good. Same thing with singing. She was the singer first, you know what I mean? So you're just one, one up in her. And yeah, all super that one up right? <laughs> So what was like, uh, what age did you start volleyball at? I started when I was 14, I think. And did you like immediately like it or was it? I was terrible. Terrible? I was so terrible for like the first two years and then I got good because I, I have like a great coach. His name is Brian Singh. And he's uh, he kind of like just took us under his wing because my, my team's from Scarborough. Not a lot of volleyball in Scarborough, especially on the guy side. And my team is just a bunch of hood rats, you know, and we just terrorized the volleyball community for four years and it was, it was super fun. So correct me if I'm wrong. You said that your sister started playing volleyball and stuff and mm -hmm. I, I think I seen an article through UCLA um, interviewing you and your manager and 
he was actually your sister's coach, correct? Yeah, that's how I met him. He was my sister's coach first. I, I tried to say that at customs when they were harassing me, <laughs> but they didn't they didn't want to hear it. But that's actually the truth. That's what happened. He uh, coached my sister at the um, uh, McCubby Games. If I'm butchering that, I mean, I know it's 50-50 between McCubby and McCubby. You know, it's a big debate. But, um, yeah, he coached her there because, I mean, we're both Jewish. And, uh, yeah, ever since then, I found out he's so connected. So, you know, kind of just started working and building momentum from there. So I want to touch back on the YouTube thing. So there was a big fight earlier mm -hmm. this week. Did you uh, did you follow that or not interested in that kind of stuff? I didn't even know till after. I would have been interested, but I'm, I'm like in a hole here. I literally don't <laughs> yeah. leave my studio. I, I just literally stay here all day and cut records or I'm at, at class which I hate, or I'm, at, you know, practicing. So you mentioned your studio a little bit. It's, I mean, it's pretty dope. It's a home studio. I mean, yeah. but, um, t just talk about that a little bit. How? Um, I mean, I define it definitely as a boutique studio. It's definitely set up for me. Um, I don't know if they can see, but behind I have my, my board, which is kind of just there to look nice, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it is kind of nice to have. Yeah, I also sure. have three screens. I have all my rack gear over there. So I'm actually like really a nerd. Nobody knows that. I um, also got a couple pairs of monitors. I'm adding to my mic collection. This is like my reference mic over here. Just so I don't, when I'm making reference tracks for other people, I don't have to stand up. Mm -hmm. And then um, I actually just bought two mics, which I'm so excited for. I just got a 47 and a uh, Sony C800, which is like the king of all mics. So. That's what I'm going to be recording my whole album for. I just did the whole EP in here. So you said the EP is done? Mm-hmm. EP is done. So you got a you got a timeline on that or um, is it kind of just still up in the air? It's kind of up in the air. We're shooting the first video December 1st for a banger. Uh, in my opinion, the songs that I've been putting out like up to this point are just the throwaways. So uh, I'm super excited for this to drop. Yeah, that's... It's pretty impressive to say if you think those are the throwaways. <laughs> I'm really interested to see see what you got on that EP then. And then uh, speaking of music videos, you actually have one coming out tomorrow, which would be the yeah. 17th, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Pronto, it's called. Um, I mean, that track, I don't, I don't know how much people from LA and around the world will love it, uh, which I'm sorry for. I feel bad for that. But uh, it's kind of just like a Toronto track. So I'm using all types of Toronto language. You know what I mean? Like kind of like that, right? Yeah, yeah Toronto like that. lingo. Um, let's see what we got. Um, so you said you weren't, um, you were pretty ignorant to basketball, but we actually ran into each other at the summer league. Yeah, uh, this this following year. So what what made you go there then? Why were you there? Uh, I mean, I followed a bit. And I have a bunch of friends just you know going to UCLA and being in the music scene. I got a bunch of friends like in the league, and I knew a bunch of them were going to be there that week. Plus. Uh, my manager is also plugged in LA. I mean, in Vegas. So I was like, "Yeah, let's go through." Saw a bunch of people. Um, yeah, it was pretty fun. I was just there chilling. A lot of people thought that I was, you know, a player. I got Kelly Oubre a lot, which is really. I don't think really? I look like him. I mean, <laughs> it's no. a compliment, but yeah. I don't think I look like him. Well, yeah, for the people that don't know, I mean, obviously you play volleyball like we've been talking about. So, what? How tall are you? Actually, uh, six eight. Six eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean. Definitely walking around at a basketball event. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can see you definitely getting a lot of, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. Yeah, for sure. Long looks, like, looking back. I'm like, what? Yeah. As you walk past them, they're like. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so, I mean, general basketball thoughts, you probably don't have too much on it then, huh? Kind of just. I mean, I'm a huge Kawhi fan. Okay. Kawhi. Just from so. a high-performance sports perspective, I think that guy is um, unbelievable just the way he. Well, I don't know if this is actually how he thinks it works, but what's portrayed to the public, the way he thinks works, everything I think is unbelievable. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Plus being from Toronto, you know. Yeah, exactly. His, now I'm a Clippers fan because Lou Will is also out there. And he's crazy. So, so uh, being from Toronto, were you like really hyped when they won the championship? Oh, I was last going season? crazy, <laughs> yo! But I was I I was following the whole thing. I was going to literally like every game, but finals came around and I got sent to uh iran <laughs> for really? yeah for like volley nations league 
which is, I mean, good. Like, I, I got to, it was actually unbelievable. I got to experience Iran and play against some of the best teams in the world, like Russia, Poland. Uh, but, yeah, it was, like, 4 in the morning, and I was definitely asleep because oh, we yeah. had to play Russia the next day. So you were out there for the entirety of the finals? Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was sucked. <laughs> so were you able to catch any of the games live? Were you, like, were you nah. able to watch? No. There's no Just, YouTube out there. There's no Instagram. There's man. no, actually, there might be Instagram. There's no Snapchat. That that's one thing I know. Streaks were done. Yo, man, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Little fun fact: if you didn't know, you can actually like email their support and be like, "Hey, we actually snapped that day." Really? And they'll be like, "Okay," and then they'll like re-add it. Oh, uh, it's not that serious for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing all that. Yeah, it's. I mean, some people are super serious about it. Um, let's see what else we got here. So. I know you're going to UCLA for volleyball, <laughs> mm -hmm. but what's your major? My major has switched a lot ever since I've gotten more and more into music. I came in as a physics major, and that was fine. And I, I did all the math, and I was like, do I, do I want to do this? You know what I mean? So I was uh, bouncing around a bit, like just thinking ideas, ideas. Was in e econ for a bit, took a couple classes, and then now I'm in poli-sci, which is basically bare minimum. So I just go to the least amount of class that I can. Uh, and do this but it's still it's still unbelievable it opens my mind to like it teaches it still teaches me a lot just being in school in general which i i'm super thankful for how do you like ucla as a whole i don't mean like obviously i bash I, them but I, I i actually love it um yeah literally every everything about it so many opportunities even in music um like my my volleyball coach helps me so much in music, sets me up with meetings with past Bruins, like the best music attorney in like history is a Bruin. So uh, like setting up meetings with people like that is unbelievable. And the network that UCLA has is crazy, and they really try to help out their students. It sounds like you have a lot of a lot of people in your corner willing to help, yeah. kind of promote you. Which is always good. I mean, there's only so much you can do. And also, you yeah. just got your manager, like you said, your coach. That's why it's, like I have like the best support in the world, which is important because like, music's a full-time job, uh, especially when you're doing stuff on the artist side and the publishing side. And then volleyball, full-time job. School, full-time job, you know what I mean? Exactly. And like you said, you, you produce. You said you write. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's more than... A lot of people probably realize you're just going out, rapping, yeah. singing, but behind the scenes you got to make your beats. You got to obviously write your lyrics, then come record it. Yeah. So I honestly, I like I've been recently I've been writing a lot for other people too. So, but definitely it, a lot of work I think goes into. Well, I mean it's it. I don't even call it work because it's so fun and sometimes it's super easy. But for like my EP, three of the songs I produced myself, and three of them. Just like my friends' beats and other people that I just like, but um, mix and mastered the whole thing myself, so it, it takes some time. I had a question, I forgot it. Completely went blank. Um, let's see what else we got here. So, um, so you say you do producing, and then you also make your own music. Do you like rapping better, or do you like producing more? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, it depends on my mood. Everything depends on my mood. Like sometimes I'm in the mood, sometimes I'm not. And I cannot be bothered to make music when I'm not in the mood. So I remember my question. You said you you write a lot for other people. Are you able yeah. to talk on that? Like anybody you um, wrote for? You want to? I I can't really talk. No. On that. Okay. <laughs> One question I wanted to ask. I noticed that you and your manager on your Instagram accounts both have JMG yeah. in your username. So is that like your? What is that exactly? That right now. I mean, technically, it's incorporated. It's a music group. So not technically a label. We we deal with everything. It's kind of just my like it, it's like my brainchild. Kind of uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that come from where I come from in Toronto that are super talented and they just don't have the means to you know explore that talent. So um, whether it's you know putting kids through um, studio sessions, just really anything, helping people produce albums, and we have a couple artists and producers that we're working with. Um, yeah, it's kind of just, you know, paying it forward. Some people, 
help me and this is this is the logo so yeah that's what i was gonna you have a tattoo of it too right yeah it's uh up there yeah yeah a little tattoo so you said you were working with some people can you touch on that or still kind of on your raps too yeah no for sure um i mean there's kama who's super dope artist also known as micah my my setter here at ucla former setter um trey west he's a ridiculous rapper you guys are gonna hear from him super soon like that's the guy anytime you hear me rap i guarantee it sounds like i bit his flow because i i probably did like <laughs> worked, i learned to rap from from him you've worked with him quite a bit in the past too haven't you yeah that's the guy who i that's that's who i learned from uh because he was friends with my sister as well that's funny uh and he he was rapping and doing his thing and I'm competitive, so I'm like, yo, I got to work with this guy because I, I got to beat this guy. And then uh, I was producing at the time, just making beats. So I was like, yo, let's work, and he blew me off. And I told him, asked him again, and he blew me off. And then he came over, and he was hanging out downstairs with my sister, and I dragged him upstairs to my studio, and then he's like, all right, you're serious. So ever since then, we made a whole album in, like, a month, and then after that, we just, you know, it's my brother. Like we, That's, like, my closest friend in music for sure. That's dope. So, I had another question. Your, what's your, like the favorite song you've done? Ooh. I am. It's not even that popular of a song, but I'm in love with trust. That's a song that I did last year. I just love the story and the emotion in my voice and uh, the flow and the way it's written. You know. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. It came out right around the time you dropped Bad Habit too. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, right? Okay. Bad Habit was, was cool too, but. Trust yeah. definitely. It from what it sounds like, a lot of artists and stuff when they talk about dropping their music and releasing, it's usually the ones they don't expect to blow up. Mm-hmm. Blow up. Is that kind of how it's been going for you? Yeah, like Wake Up and Came Up have been the two that kind of popped off for me. Uh and Wake Up, that was me and Kama. And we just did that like on a random Thursday, you know? Like we just made a track and then we actually no, it was on a Saturday. It was on a Friday. We went, <laughs> we just came home from practice and we just made a track and we thought it was crazy the second we made it, but came up, actually came up. I also thought was crazy the second I made it, but that only took like an hour and a half. Really? So it's always, you know, sometimes it's a quick one and, some, and sometimes like, I feel like the best songs either take one hour or like 20 hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's. It's it's a good song. Um, I noticed you have a kind of go back to the YouTube connections. You have a song with Dax. Yeah. Have Have you been working with him recently or anything? Uh, not recently, but we have a we have a bunch of songs that we just didn't release. Uh, same thing with Wolfie, but I mean, I'll hit him up. I should hit him up. That guy's super real. Yeah, he just I mean he came out with the um what was that song called um. It was super like controversial because it was about religion, and mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people don't want to talk about religion and for politics. Sure. Yeah. So I know he definitely got a lot of coverage for that. One thing about Dax is he's he's smart and he knows how to grind. That guy works harder than anyone I know, and I think I work hard, but yeah, that guy can work. So I know you have a new EP coming out soon, mm-hmm. and what was the difference um, working on that um, compared to your previous one, Hold Me Down? Um, well, I just signed a record deal, so this is the first album that's coming out, or first EP that's coming out through that record deal, and, uh, Hold Me Down was kind of me trying to see what it's like to be a big artist, and, uh, this EP, uh, it's kind of the opposite, it's like me, like, yeah, I'm signed, whatever, I I did what I wanted to do, now let me make what I want to make and mix it myself, you know, master it myself, and show the world my sound, you know? So, um, we know you do writing, mix, master, like you said, and um, I forgot what song it was, but you mentioned Russ. I'm not Russ, but I'm missing you crazy. Oh, yeah. And uh, Russ is very vocal about doing everything himself. So, what, mm-hmm. I know he was in the controversy recently with the whole fight everything. or whatever. Yeah, so, <laughs> what, what do you think about Russ? Obviously, you've mentioned him talent so. perspective that guy is insane he works his ass off mm-hmm. yeah i think his under like his talent undeniable work ethic undeniable i mean people are gonna have problems with whatever they're gonna have problems with but and exactly. i have no clue about i kind of keep 
keep out of all that stuff. But um, yeah, talent, work ethic wise, that guy's insane. I agree. Um, I feel like kind of touch on him. He gets a lot of hate for just trying to promote his stuff. I mean, people hate on anything. Exactly, though. it's crazy. Um, what what do you kind of wish you knew before you did volleyball? Music, obviously. What do you think you wish you knew? You wish you knew before. What would you change? Keep the same. I think I might sound cocky, but I think I keep it the exact same. Uh, I think, like I, I grow and I learn every day, which is super important. And now I'm mindful of that because I've grown to that point. And I, I just think that it's a journey that I have to, I have to, I have to go through. That's good though. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are all, always afraid to say. I'm the best. I yeah. did everything good. Like I'm. Oh, I'm not saying I did everything yeah. good or perfect. Well, I'm yeah, saying, but everything happens. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. I mean, you're in a good spot. I mean, a lot of people probably wish they were in your seat right now doing what you're doing. Yeah. So sure. I mean, yeah, you're doing stuff right. So who would you think is your uh, top five favorite artists of right now in the music industry? Ooh, right now, like current. Yeah. yeah whatever. Your your top five favorite. Not saying who you think the best favorite i mean it changes on the month like some some months all i listen to is country or classical um i mean akon's still putting out bangers so akon did you like his latest album yeah he's crazy like he's crazy mm -hmm. and he had that one song that he sampled uh oh i forget what, was, what, what that song called that he sampled yeah i definitely forget it but it's a banger uh so akon Drizzy's up there. That guy's insane. Um, who else? I fell in love with J. Cole's, like, older stuff, so he's still got to be up there. Who else? I get hated on because I think it's Drake over Kendrick, especially being in L.A., but people don't understand I'm a huge Kendrick fan as well. I think he's also in the top five. Um, I don't know. Who else? Let me think. Just give us a wild card. You said you listen to... Any type of music that people wouldn't expect. Oh. Might be Joe Boy. African African artist. Okay. Yeah, he's crazy. He's not even nah, he's huge. He's huge now. <laughs> he wasn't that big when I first hit him like hit him up, but now he's he's huge. So what are your plans with music, volleyball? What do you what are just your general plans going forward? Um, haven't really got it all figured out yet. Uh I wanna keep playing. Uh I understand that that's really difficult as far as the time commitment goes, especially given the fact that uh, the professional leagues for volleyball are all, like none of them are in North America. So we'll see how that goes, but I know music's going to be a big part of my future. Yeah, so kind of like how you said you were ignorant to basketball, I'm ignorant to volleyball at a yeah. higher, level, higher level. So like you said, there's nothing in North America, so mm -hmm. how, how would that work? You just obviously I, move. Yeah, I'd probably... And the best situation for music for me would probably be Paris. Um, but it's all like Europe, Asia, South America. Okay. So, I mean, I kind of skipped over this question, so we're going to kind of backtrack. What's your What's your dream collab? Who would you like to have on a feature? Akon, for Akon. sure. Yeah. Let's see. What else we got? Um, is there, I mean, kind of got all of our questions done. Is there anything you want to promote? I know you said you got your... Uh, music video coming out tomorrow as we're recording this yeah music video coming out tomorrow a uh, big huge music video coming out uh probably first thing in the new year cool cool um so we do have was this beat by you or this beat no this beat is tim and he goes by the name No Name Tim. That guy is insane. He produced one of the songs on my EP, and he'll probably have a couple joints on my on my album. Okay, so I'll go ahead and play it. Let me get it up real quick. There it is. All right, so go ahead and get this playing if you want to. Let's see if I can remember the words. I don't know when I wrote this. Look, it's cold. I bet everyone knows the sample. Hey, look, 
I get what I want, that's why I get you It was love from the moment that I met you I had to lock you down like the police Then I had to hold you down, had to arrest you Cause you the type of girl that niggas run through Just don't do anything that you can't undo You know it ain't no bra strap that I can't undo Come through, come through, baby, come through And you get what you want, that's why you get me You knew that I was special before you met me I know that look in your eyes saying sex me If I'm the man of your dreams, that's a wet dream I'm about it, I love your dress but you look better when you fresh about it You love to stress, you look the best when you ain't worried about it I wasn't gonna shoot my shot but I was curry about it Swish <laughs> That was dope, that was dope <laughs> I'm a little I sick like right it, now, like I'm it. sorry No, you're good, that sounds good Breath control is all over the place so I think that's it. Um, like I said, is there any last minute things you want to shout out or anything, or got it all out? Yeah, no, that, that was kind of it. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We appreciate you having our show, Kofi. Yeah, so yeah, nice. uh, Pronto coming out tomorrow. Yes, sir. Well, by the time this video comes out, it'll be the same day. So check that out. Uh, you want to shout out your Instagram and social media feeds? Yeah, uh, at JMG Kofi Twitter, Instagram. It's really all I use. <laughs> I just go by Kofi. K-O-F-I on everything else. Spotify, Apple Music, wherever. Deezer, title. Don't forget to check out his EP coming soon. Again, this has been Apartment 3. Thank you guys for watching. Later, guys. If you don't know Kofi, you about to know Pronto. A young nigga from Toronto Grew with the guns moving loud like Pablo No Ico, hot grabber, no Fronto Ghanaian nigga got my chain from Accra Diamonds doing the Zanto